It's beady. First, microphone. Back to the old one for now. Because I am shirtless and can't wear a lapel microphone. So, let me know if you like this one better than the lapel microphone. And I will switch back to it. But today, we are going to be talking about what I'm calling interval hanging. So, basically, it is the application of my new theories on optimizing length and girth work. So, let's talk about ways you can support me first. I have a Patreon where I'm trying to do curated content of all my Reddit posts to make them easier to find. If you're struggling with the Reddit, that's probably your best place to start. Then, Leviathan Wellness Supplements at leviathansupps.com and Amazon. This is Vigor, our stimulant-free nitric oxide boosting pre-workout. We have formulated it to be the best bang for your buck, meaning that you'll get your money's worth compared to other supplements. Uh, the reviews have been very good so far. Me and my partner, Doc Hank, are quite proud of what we've accomplished. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but I think it's pretty great. So, might be worth your while. And peakmalephysique.com for penis enlargement and aids that are not needed but can help. Let's summarize what the science says before we really talk about interval hanging. What the science is saying is that the more often you load a tissue the more opportunities we have for collagen failure slash fatigue. Therefore, we have more chances for our tissue to start remodeling to better handle this new found stimulus. Let's think about this in the gym. You can try this out literally right now. Touch your toes, hold it for 30 seconds. Come back again and touch your toes for 30 seconds. It's gonna feel easier. Do it again, it's gonna be even easier. And about five to 10 load cycles would be the maximum elongation. Therefore, you won't be able to reach any farther than you already have by the set previous. How does that apply to penis enlargement? As many of you know by now, the tunica albuginea is a strong sheath of connective tissue. Therefore, it will have similar healing effects and stress responses as other connective tissues like tendons and ligaments. The only real difference is what the structure is designed for. The tunica albuginea is designed for pressure holding. It's a vessel. A few ways we can increase the stimulus, or we have a few ways we can apply stimulus to the tunica. One is chronic expansion. Two is stretching. And then apparently three is heating. And I'll get more into that in another video. I have to look into it more. But today I am talking about the stretching. So as I laid out before, the more often you load and unload the load, the weight, the more often you will fatigue the collagens because you're adding more, the more often you'll fatigue the collagen fibrils as that gives it more opportunities to fail. So simply put, the more sets you do in an allotted time period will have a greater effect on the size and shape of the collagen fibrils, the tunica albuginea, in our case, than just doing one long set the entire time period. Or if you do six five minute sets, it will have a greater effect on tissue deformation than one set of 30 minutes. Still with me? So for hanging, we would like to load more often than we would to just statically stretch. What I'm talking about should be applicable to manual stretches and extending as well. However, extending it might be harder to fully release and then fully reload because, you know, as an extender, you're going to be limited to the length of the springs and how far they can compress. And then with stretches, you can actually probably do even more load and unloads. So your static stretch should be about 45 seconds at most from what I can tell. Now, someone refuted that in the comments that the study that I pulled from didn't fully test every possible thing, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. 45 seconds is going to be plenty and it's going to be a good ratio between release and load. So that's where we get into this protocol. It is dead simple. With either compression or vacuum hanging, you're going to be doing five minute sets, but total time is going to be roughly the same still to get the maximum uh, stimulus. So for vacuum hangers, that means you will be doing upwards of 12 sets in one hour without taking the device off. For compression hangers, you're still going to want to take the device off every 20 minutes. However, that should have been obvious, <laughs> okay, because we're trying to keep the blood 
supply ample to the glands. So if beginners, I'm not 100% sold that you're going to need to be doing this. You should be working the ligaments, but on paper, doing between the cheeks interval stretching or interval hanging will have greater results than just regular hanging or stretching between the cheeks. You're going to want between 15 and 25 minutes as a beginner. So that would be three to five sets of five minutes. Um, as for the rest period, it should only be about 10 to 20 seconds. For intermediate guys, you want to be doing 25 to 35 minutes. That would be five to seven sets of five minutes. Again, 10 to 20 seconds break between sets. And then for advanced guys, you're going to be wanting to do 35 minutes up to an hour. In my experience, there has never been a need to go longer than an hour with any kind of hanging, regular hanging or uh, interval hanging, especially interval hanging, because once you get into it, you'll realize that the fatigue sets in much faster. I can get the same amount of work done with interval hanging fatigue feeling wise. So it's all anecdotal in 40 to 45 minutes compared to hanging for an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. So the science applied makes a lot of sense when you think about it. And if once you try it out for yourself, you'll see it. And since this is a, causing more fatigue to the tissues, I never really believed in all day stretching to begin with, but like the science now basically confirms that it's pointless because these tissues are fatigued. They will be elongated. That's the point. It causes collagen failure. It will no longer crinkle back up when not under load. So if you did enough work, you should be elongated. We talked about time. Let's talk about weight. Um, it's going to depend on what device you use. If you use vacuum hanging, beginners, probably five to six pounds. That's all you're going to need. Intermediates, um, six to eight pounds. And then advanced guys, anywhere from seven and a half to 10 pounds. For me, I've been still using seven and a half pounds for like six months because I am more focused on the fatigue than the, you know, how much my dick can, <laughs> how much my dick can hang, bro. But anyway, that's one of the issues with the older ways of doing this is that one of the only uh, compounding factors we can, could control was weight. So you were incentivized to go heavier and heavier, which only really teaches this connective tissue to get stronger instead of fatiguing. That's one of the new variables we can control is set period. Yeah, set total time. Set time. There we go. Set time. To know if you're doing this right, first, you need to measure your bone press stretch flaccid length before your session. Vacuum hangers would want to hang, or shit, vacuum hangers would probably want to track below the glands rather than with the glands because if you go raw like me, your glands are going to be much larger than they were flaccid. So that can uh, make the measurement blurry, if you will. So we are going to compare with our post-stretched flaccid length. So whatever length you can reach after the session, you should be using roughly the same tension. So that means it should not be painful. It is just a slight pull. We want to be between 104 to 106% longer. So if you're eight and a quarter stretch length to start, like me, that means you want to be about eight and three quarters to 8.9 inches post session to maximize the uh, tissue deformation or to confirm that you maximize the tissue deformation. If you're under that, either add a little more weight next time or add more sets. I would recommend adding more sets before you add more weight. Realistically, you'll be adding reps every three weeks. If you are shrunken afterwards, that's a sign of overwork and you should probably lighten up on the weight a bit. I do this predominantly straight out. So I do not feel much fatigue or tension on my penis. So consider that. Another thing, in the first two to three weeks I've done this, like I said, I was about eight and a quarter stretch flaccid beforehand. Um, after two weeks of doing this, my stretch flaccid is eight and three quarters. So I need to measure what I am after a session to confirm that I'm still in the right range, but that is showing that the fatigue is set in. And now we're just waiting for the tissue to build up on top of that. Oh, tangent, it is 
pretty normal to have a bone pressed erect length longer than your bone pressed stretch flaccid length. It really comes down to your gland size. I have big glands anymore. So those inflate, that makes up for the loss in stretched length when I'm erect. So yeah, don't really worry about it. That's why I'm telling you vacuum hangers to focus more on the length of the shaft itself rather than the entire length of the penis. Compression hangers, it doesn't really fucking matter. Um, I think I went over it all, but th in my, it, what I've been doing is I've been stretching or I've been hanging with interval hanging for about 12 sets of an hour. And then in the evening, I've been pumping. Now, it doesn't really matter when you do both, but in my, <laughs> I've had this issue where I would hang and then I would immediately pump and I would be literally borderline like nine inches bone pressed again. And it would be like close to eight and three quarters non bone pressed. <laughs> and then six and a quarter inches around. So I would get these immediate hard and full gains. If my wife wants to have afternoon sex, she gets pissed that I am that large. So I need to make sure I am not overly big for her. Again, she's on, again, she's on board with my progress with penis enlargement, but she can't take the 10% jump in total volume. Because, again, that's a lot of meat. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm done talking about that. I want to respect her a little bit. So, <laughs> but yeah. From what I can tell, mixing, interval pumping, and interval hanging is going to be probably my way of doing all my penis enlargement going forward. Just because, on paper, you're getting the optimal expansion in both directions. Therefore, you're going to grow in both directions. And most guys want both length and girth. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to affect the 1-3 protocol and tunica malleability, but I'll get around to figuring that out. But yeah, I think that's it. So, let me know if I miss anything in the comments. Uh, I am going to talk about why I don't like length pumping. I need to collect my thoughts on it, but mainly it comes down to how uncomfortable it is and the amount of edema it creates does not seem conducive for actual gains. So if that's all you have access to, by all means, go ahead and do it. But if you have the choice, don't. <laughs> that's basically what the gist of the next video is going to be. And then I have a few other changes I want to talk about with girth work in general, why I think clamping is no longer a meat and potato idea. It should be used in very specific applications as we progress. So, but again, it, if that's all you have access to, you will gain. It's just, I'm talking about optimization. So, anyway, that should be it. Uh, I did put it back, but I didn't show you guys the correct way. Vigor, Leviathan Supplements, LeviathanSupps.com, Amazon, Patreon, Peak Male Physique. This is BD, and he's signing off.